and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for uh, Best of One Day Monday, but we have a donation deck here where we're going to be playing some Best of Three. So we get our first shot at Best of Three here in the brand new standard format. No more Oko Thief of Crowns, no more Veil of Summer, no more Once Upon a Time, none of those cards. So it'll be interesting to try this out um, in this new format and kind of see what we play against and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, as you can see with this donation deck here, this is Boros Knights. We're going to be uh, getting aggressive here with the Knight Tribal deck. We even got Sky Knight Legionnaire here. Get some flying haste damage in. And then, of course, all of our Throne of Eldraine Knights. Inspiring Veteran, Rimrock Knight, Worthy Knight, Venerable Knight, Acclaimed Contender, Fervent Champion. You know, this is basically Throne of Eldraine Tribal. Uh, I guess Weaselback Redcap. That's also a Throne of Eldraine card. Um... So yeah, we're just playing our red and white cards, attacking a whole lot. Of course, we got Ember Cleave at the top end because of how powerful this equipment is. Venerate Luxodon can do some nutty stuff as well. I like the look of this deck. Um, I'm not, I'm not in love with these God's Willings, but maybe they'll protect like a Worthy Knight um, or Inspiring Veteran, and um, you know help us uh, after you know with protecting them there. Um, and our sideboard, uh, let's see, we got a couple of tournament grounds, which are really good game one at helping a, as being an untapped dual land for all almost all of our stuff in game one, but not as good post board because all of these spells uh, don't get cast off tournament grounds post board. And so that's why there's only two instead of four. But post board, I, I actually really like our sideboard here. Um, we have good removal uh, with Lava Coil, Justice Strike, and Response. The reason why we're playing Justice Strike, well, Justice Strike is just an awesome card. But that and Response, both of these are going to be real good against Gruul and just other aggro decks that are attacking us. Um, you know, because they're they're good quality instant speed removal spells at two mana. So I like that quite a bit. And I, I really like our control plan here with three Gideon Blackblade and four Outlaws Merriment, especially these Outlaws Merriments. I love having this as like a sideboard card against control to just give you another angle of attack. I think that's really awesome. Um, so I'm real excited about that. Uh, so yeah, this deck just looks pretty good overall. You know, we got a good aggressive game plan where we have um, a nice way to zig um, here post board and uh, to kind of switch up our angle of attack there. And then against other aggro decks, good quality removal. And like response is the kind of card that's just a good, it's a good removal spell whenever they're attacking you. But if you're ahead, you can just cast the resurgence part and finish the game out also so good dual threat there okay so let's go ahead and give this a try in this new format so we're going to be playing a uh, a league here we'll play till we win five or lose two whatever happens first so here we go yeah unbreakable formation is a pretty nice card uh, I guess you don't like basically unbreakable formation would go in the God's willing slot. You know, you can kind of play um, either of those. Um, so, yeah, I could definitely see playing unbreakable formation instead or even splitting that one and one. <clears throat> I like unbreakable formation more, uh, but our donation deck here has God's willing. I don't like God's willing as much because Bone Crusher Giant and Questing Beast see a lot of play. Hmm. This is a really good hand. It's just sequencing this. I think we want to get the venerate, Venerable Knights in play first since they don't have haste and then follow it up with the haste creatures afterwards. Correct. Yes. If you want, yeah, you can have you can have lands, your know, basic lands in your sideboard, but that's part of your 15. <clears throat> but yeah, you're allowed to, to put basic lands over there that can alter the number of lands in your deck. Like if you if you um, bring in a lot higher curve after sideboarding, you, you can add in an extra land. That's something that I think is a pretty underrated part of Magic and something that I know I don't do enough and just people in general don't do enough is have, um, have land in their sideboard to 
<clears throat> alter their land count depending on what their post board games look like. So this is my not playing around a sweeper play here of Worthy Knight. If they have flame sweep, it's very bad for me. But I can basically make it so they're going to die if they don't have flame sweep. So, you know, I could just go all in. And they're very dead if they don't have flame sweep. But then if they have flame sweep, I'm pretty dead. So that's, that's the tough call here. I think what I'm going to do is not go all in. Hmm. I mean, what's the chances they actually have flame sweep, right? So yeah, if they do have flame sweep, so basically I could just play fervent champion here. I could just play Fervent Champion. Okay. And then I, I could hold back Venerable Knight and Fervent Champion. But it's game one. Like, if that's game two or three, we could do something else. But game one, um, you know, against an unknown opponent, I don't think it's that likely they just have a Flame Sweep. So I decided to go in. <laughs> Smork is the way. All right, so we saw Temple of Epiphany and Island. Could be, um, I mean, it could be Jeskai control. It could be Teamer Reclamation. Um, could could be. You know, like a team or elemental deck. I mean, there could be a lot of different things. It's likely... Con I'm going to kind of treat it like it's a control deck. And we're going to bring in Gideon and Merry Mint. Um, I'm guessing... Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna guess it's like a, a Jeskai control deck. I think that's what I want to do here. Could be... Yeah, it could be just an is it draw two deck. Venerate Luxodon, bad against sweepers. With having like these other things, I'm going to take out two Ember Cleaves. Yeah, we're going to take out two Ember Cleaves. We're going to take out this Weaselback Red Cap. Um, hey, Revolution. Not much to play in a whole lot of magic. Um, and then, yeah, so the thing about Venerate Luxodon is it does make me better against Flame Sweep, which could be a sweeper of choice for there, for them. We're going to take out two, and then I kind of want to just take out these God's Willings, honestly. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to take out the God's Willings. God's Willing could protect our threat against a threat. Or, like, sorry, could protect our threat against a removal spell. But I'd rather just have another threat, you know. Just, so instead of taking out more threats, we'll just take out the God's Willings. Because then also, if, if this is Jeskai, the other reason to take it out is, it, is if this is Jeskai, likelihood is that they're playing Teferi Time Raveler. And if, I, if I'm a little bit behind, if I can't get Teferi Time Raveler off the battlefield, I could just be stuck with the, uh, some dead God's Willings in hand. So yeah, we'll keep one Venerate Luxodon because of its power. We'll keep one Ember Cleave because of its power. And then just kind of have our other threats there. Oh yeah, there's they definitely like them basically no matter what they're playing, the probability that they're playing Bone Crusher Giant is very high. And again, that's 
another reason not to have God's willing doesn't help against Bone Crusher Giant. Um, Granite Mulligan, keep and get rid of this. Bone Crusher Giant is such a good card. Merriment's my best card to play here. They could have a counter spell for it, though. Hopefully not. That hurts. No, I don't have a Teamer Adventures deck list. Um, no, I don't have one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, power level between Bone Crusher Giant and Sky Knight Legionnaire for three drops is pretty big. We didn't get flame sweeped. I need some kindling. Get out of my way. Or, you know, don't. Well, I like our chances again on the play for game three. Our chances for game for game three. Okay, so this is a good venerate Luxon matchup. We've seen they're not Jeskai. Um, they're just blue reds. So they're you know going to be doing a lot of damage based stuff. This is this is a good venerate Luxon matchup to kind of pump up our creatures and stuff. Um, Whoa! <laughs> Revapa! You are amazing. Thank you so much. Alright, y'all get a bunch of hype in the chat. We have Simon, Jexter, Zaxor, Icy Bear Live, Derelict, Dizzy, Kanzan, I, Real Hurand, 
65H1000 and Cubism. All getting those gifted subs. So much hype. Thank you so much. So that, that should get us up to 16. So pretty close to... That gets us our 19th sub goal. And by the way, I'm, I'm taking out Sky Knight Legionnaires since we brought in three drops with Gideon. I'm taking out those for three drops. Or it says 15. I guess we're at, I guess we're at number 15. That's what it says here. All right, so we're at, uh, that's our 19th sub goal towards our next 12 hour stream. So only one more. So we're only five subs away for a 12 hour stream, which I think, I think the good time to schedule that 12 hour stream is going to be on the 21st, whenever we get historic. We have like a 12 hour historic stream where we'll play a whole bunch of new historic decks. That sounds fun. Well, thank you so much, Ravapa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could get quenched. I'm mean, gonna still be able to attack with the venerated, the venerable knight this turn, even if it does. But I think that's worth playing because I'd rather them quench that than quench my merriment next turn. So hopefully they don't have um, a quench for this merriment next turn. Hey, kitty dexterity. Santa Kitty's here as well, gifting a sub to Papa Tim. <laughs> Since I, I counted wrong, and you said four. Well, thank you so much, getting us to that 16. Good, that's the best one for us to hit. Alright, so that was the best my opponent could have. Quench your Venerate Luxodon, then Flame Sweep. That was perfect, but we have Merriment, so can Merriment finish the job on its own? Midnight Clock means they could have six mana Chandra this turn. That would be bad. Um, if you, it talks about the banned cards in the packs and everything in that article there, Master Tracks. Hey, Delio. So like they have, ooh, no land drop? No land drop. No, we're playing against just, is it control? Had like niv they have niv it. Man, another three one, that's lucky. niv it, Chandra. Hmm. Like, they're going to have to play a sweeper. Doesn't really... Doesn't really make sense to play the Venerable Knight, but also doesn't really make that much sense to hold the Venerable Knight either. So really... You can kind of go with either either option. Like, neither, neither option's great. You know, like, holding it means that we're not putting pressure to try to kill them. Playing it means it's just going to die to a sweeper that they have to play a sweeper to stabilize. So it's... I mean, unless they have, you know, like... Forked Bolt that they kill these two cards. Or Chandra's Pyre Helix, that is. There's, 
there's not really a reason to do either. To save it or not save it. There's not really a reason either way. I mean, I could st I'm still going to make a creature with the castle either way. Like, that's the thing, is I have the mana to still activate castle, so it's not like it's not like it's keeping me from castling by playing it. Get out of my way. I'm burning up here. Everyone knows the bigger explosions are more fun. Mm. The gods bless us in our righteous cause. Prepare for battle. Hey, at least I tried. So I know I could have put them down to one. I, I kind of just like getting Chandra out of here. All right, good job, Merriment. And we're 1-0. Do you have a bunch of historic decks brewed up? Um, not right now, but I, I have a lot of idea. Like, I, I basically know what I want to make kind of thing. And so I was, I was planning on just on making them on Thursday whenever, whenever they update with the new card. But, yeah, so basically I was going to... I guess the answer would be I would be brewing some. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy to take submissions as well. What's up, Zerf? Yeah, I'll, I'll be building historic decks. Too. I, I know um, that some of y'all have had some decks you want to see. That's a good hand. But yeah, I'll, I'll make stuff for Thursday. Nope. Hey, baloney pony. Four months now. Thank you so much, baloney pony. That's sub number 17 on the day. Okay. Well, yeah, thanks for the resub. All right, so we're three subs away from our 12-hour stream now. Yep, they announced the bans. There's the article right there. Oh, Pioneer bans yet. Oh, sorry. I didn't see the word Pioneer. I don't know there. It's possible my opponent's still playing Oko. Um, I mean, good chance they still have Oko. If they were in... If they were in this event and had, you know, Oko in their deck already before the bans today, they still are allowed to finish the event, so they they could be just, like, finishing their league. They already had Oko. Oh, I guess I wasn't really that worried about 
I wasn't really even thinking about Masker Girl, but I guess that's true that playing Worthy Knight does turn on their Masker Girl. I do want to get Goose out of here. At seven. Darn. Definitely the card they needed. Good call. Hey, we got a new sub, Vogtelex, getting in on the hype. Bringing those boats to the chat. Thank you so much there, Vog. Our 18th sub of the day. Hmm. This doesn't look good for us. We could just draw one of our three Ember Cleaves. Well, how about that? And the Crazy 88 with a Twitch Prime sub as well. Thank you, Crazy 88. All right, 19, one away now. So my, my opponent hasn't played any cards that are banned yet. Trying to update this. Okay. Yeah, we're very close to the 12 hour stream. Um, Basically, with them drawing that Gilded Goose. Like, I'm I'm probably putting, like, lethal against... Or, like, I don't know. This, like, my opponent may just have lethal here against me. Okay, now they do. By, by doing this. But I, I think it's still my best play regardless. I mean, they, they should attack all out. I have to chump block if they would attack all out. Awesome, Vogue. Yeah, glad you love it. Um, that was... It was... I helped tune it, but it was originally built by a viewer for a donation deck. But, you know, I helped tune it some. Or wait, never mind. No, I built that. Never mind. They, the, the viewer wanted 
for actually they built a completely different deck yeah but they wanted four crackling troll for ethereal absolution with that deck and then i and so i put that together with the knights to to go along with the um the best way to to play for crackling troll for ethereal absolution but yeah it was their idea um I, I you know i wouldn't have thought of playing for ethereal absolution but it actually just worked really well I liked it quite a bit. So I think my only play is to attack with all. Um, this It's kind of worse with Murderous Rider, but I can't, because of... Wicked Wolf, I can't just attack with one creature. I just have to hope my opponent blocks in such a way that I can win. It's pretty obvious my plan, though, so I don't expect them to block in such a way that I can win. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. It's like a little mini garden. Uh, yeah, this game is in. We're going to lose. My only... Like, now my only hope is that they just don't sack food and just kind of mess up. Never mind. They gained life. All right, so Masker Girl, that card's a problem. Don't think we have a good answer to Masker Girl. Nope, don't really have a good answer. I definitely want these Lava Coils. I don't think Gideon is necessarily that great in this matchup with Murderous Rider being their removal spell that also kills Gideon. And we could try Merry Mint. I only had, my opponent just went to 10 with sacrificing that food. I only had 8 trample damage getting through. Um, and they could make that even less than 8 anyway by sacrificing Cauldron Familiar and replaying it. Or like, you know, so they, they could have gone to 11 there. So No, I, I did not have lethal. I guess plan is probably Merriman's. Still. Gonna kind of trim around the edges. All right, we're all in. Let's go. We're going to just spew out our hand on turn three. And hope it's...
Good enough to win. We got a plan, though. I like having a plan. I think the bands were all reasonable. I think they were all, all very reasonable. Hey, Kakuna. Thank you so much for uh, subbing there, being our 20th sub. Thank you so much. So that means that means that we hit enough sub goals for the 12 hour stream. We got there. So now we're working on sub goals towards the next one. All right. So I think right out the plan is 12 hour stream on Thursday. For new historic formats. Twelve hour stream. E Earwig, old field. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for continuing that Twitch Prime sub there, Earwig. Thank you so much. Twelve hour stream hype. So next, so next 12 hour stream on Thursday. Kakunas as always, uh, watch your stuff on YouTube. Love the content. First time actually catching you live on stream. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for taking taking some time out, stopping by over here. And of course, thanks for watching all the videos on YouTube also. And yeah, thanks for that support too. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so we got uh, we got that game. We had our turn three plan. It worked. I think I kind of want to keep in more Luxodon. I, I kind of like that Luxodon plan. That seemed to work pretty well. Hopscotch Scooter getting in on the hype. So even though Legionnaire attacks in the air, it's, you know, it's a three mana card that gets eaten up by Wicked Wolf, which is why I'm trimming it. Maybe I do just play the Gideon, even though Gideon gets Murderous Ridered. And Gideon also just doesn't get through. No, we won't. Doesn't get through uh, Cauldron Familiar. All right, 20 second sub. Yeah, the, the problem is, is they're they're playing a bunch of Masker Girls. So the all-in plan doesn't always work. And so that's what the Merry Mints hopefully help us out there. So that game one. Does Firm of Champion have double strike? 
That looked like double strike. Boo. Those Boo, Hawkeye. My opponent's a cheater. Just one bite, and all your cares are yeah. gone. Cheater. I mean, I could never kill this thing. Exerve, here you go, Todd. Truth. Deck took you from Diamond 3 to Mythic number 1315 in the course of a couple hours earlier today. That's awesome. Having 12 straight wins with it. Hope you enjoy playing it and let me know what you think. Awesome. Thank you so much there, Exerp. So, um, did you mention, let me check the message here. Okay, yeah. What? So, basically, what day and what time slot do you want me to play? Sweet, your D Demir control deck. Like, you want me to... Uh... Okay, cool. I like the description there, too. What do you got in there? So, like, tomorrow... Okay. So, basically, yeah, tomorrow is, like, the earliest convenience. Um... But I can do it. I can, you know, like, do you have a preference on which slot tomorrow? First, second, third, or fourth? Hey, what's up, Yud? Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, no, no rush on the thumbnails. I got those two decks last, so you got a lot of time there. you must be famished. But hopefully, your Monday starts improving. Get to relax. Okay, first slot tomorrow. Sound perfect. All right, I'll... Okay, double check mana base will do. Really, Thrashing Brontodon? Come on, but my plan is merriment. Ugh. All right, this Oko card's pretty good. Um, again, if if you're wondering how they can be playing Oko, even though Oko is banned, it's because we're in a, an event here, and they already registered with the event earlier before the bannings took place, and so they, they get to just play out the event with their deck. Um, so that's why they're still playing Oko. So yeah, we'll lava coil it. They'll sack it to oven. But since they attacked, it was a risky attack. Since they attacked, now we get to kill Oko. You are fouler than if <sighs> your expectations are exhausting. But they have the, the trail of crumbs engine going, um, and of course they're pressuring us with this three three. Um, I think nothing got banned in Pioneer for somebody. What somebody said. Yeah, I thought that I thought that they would wait till the update on the twenty first for the bans to take place, but they they actually took place immediately. So actually, the bans are in effect right now. Man, Trailer Crumb so good. Use some three ones. All right, the plan is just go merry mint, merry mint, merry mint, and see if we can get triple merry mint out here to to outgrind our opponent. That's my plan. Uh, 
Yeah, the Pioneer one was separate and is I think somebody said earlier that they are they did announce it already and there were no changes. Sorry. Yep, just we just kind of got unlucky playing against the, this deck after the bannings. Just how it is. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, sorry if that was really loud to headphone users. I'm sorry. Okay, it's just saying, microphone, pet me. Um, so yeah, is our Agent of Treachery reanimator decks viable again? Um, Uh, the bannings definitely helped. Agent of Treachery, Blood for Bones. Um, besides, besides the fact that there's going to be, there should be more aggro, and you know more, you know, Witches Oven, Cauldron Familiar type stuff, but um, they could maybe go underneath you if you don't have like your real good hands with that kind of deck. But um, yeah, no Veil of Summer. Definitely helps that kind of deck. You don't understand the merriment and aggro? You get you get a creature every single turn. Isn't that what you wanted in an aggro deck? So I took the Fervent Champion over Inspiring Veteran because I want to be able to I want to be able to double spell this next turn. I wanna you know, I definitely want to play Merriment. And so I took the one mana card because we were gonna, you know. We could draw a land and we'd have two mana then, but we, if not, we have one mana. Um, plus, having two Fervent Champions as blockers is is quite good. But triple, obviously, triple Trail of Crumbs is probably just going to outgrind us, though. I don't really expect us winning this against Triple Trail of Crumbs. Because, yeah, they should just be able to find all their Cauldron Familiars and Witches Ovens. So I have to attack with this life linker. Because otherwise we'll be dead to the cauldron familiar. Hey, Darkla. But we're pretty dead here. Triple trail of crumbs. Yep. Very dead.
Yeah, triple crumbs, triple oven. Okay, yeah, so Discord, there, uh, there's the link for Discord. And then submit a deck. Um, yeah, you can send me a message on Discord there. Um, if you're doing a donation deck, uh, there's the link to donate. And just put a link to your deck in the donation message. You can't just copy paste the whole deck there. You have to copy paste it on a, another site like MTG Goldfish, something, and then link the deck. Hey, thanks, Abo. Welcome. Happy to have you over here. I think that all the bands were, were very reasonable, and I think they will make the format more diverse. Yep. Un unfortunately, we got we got paired against a deck that you know, like this deck is before. You know, we got a pre-banned deck here. And Oko put my opponent uh, quite, quite a ways ahead this game. Well, that's how, that's how it goes. Yeah, they had turn two Oko on the play. And which just got them really far ahead. Yeah, the deck master allows you to see the, be able to scroll over the cards. Um, I am assuming it's not. It hasn't worked in about ten days, though. I'm kind of assuming it's not working again today. I haven't pulled it up yet, though. All right, this thing's over. We're gonna concede. They have four damage right now, and all they have to do, and they have, they get to look at a ton of cards. Um, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They get to look at ten cards, and they just have to find one other cauldron familiar, which is oven. They get to just draw millions of cards. It's over. That was okay. Yeah, so we're one and one. Oh wait, deckmaster actually may be working. Wait, it actually may be working now.
Y'all let me know if, if Deckmaster is working. Over on my end, it looks like the the things are green, which means like working. The last 10 days, they've been, you know, a lot of like white and red and things that mean not working. So maybe it's actually working now. Do you think that Fires is actually competitive now? I think that uh, I think that Fires of Invention is one of the cards that got hit the hardest by the bans. I think that it's a lot less competitive in what I'm predicting the new format to look like than what it was before. I think we're going to have a lot faster format, a lot more aggro, um, and a, a lot more counter magic, um, which is which means that building a fires deck where you have a lot of expensive sorcery speed stuff is, is not where you want to be. Yay, it's working again. Yay. See, so yeah, it was like last Friday that it stopped working, not even like this past Friday. Yep, excerpts that sounds that sounds about right. Yeah, I never I never heard you know, I sent that email about cardboard live yesterday. I'd never heard anything from them. Never never got a response. Just double checked. Well, darn. That made my attack pretty poor. But yeah, if you if you want to see more more of my thoughts on on everything that I think is gonna be happening with the format, uh, check it out on the Patreon page there. Um, you know, Patreon.com/slash TotSeamsMTG. I wrote. Um, I wrote about what I think is going to be happening to the standard format there. Man, that Black Lance Paragon was a killer. Attacking really hurt. I wanted to get the, the damage in for Embercleave's sake, you know, like they could set me up with a really nice Embercleave the next turn. But obviously now we're in such a bad spot. I don't know. Don't know how I'm going to really win this. Urban Champion's good. I need to get this red source in, but I also just never I just don't want to shock at all, but I need to need to play it. Okay, I need to have more red sources, but I don't want to pay two life.
This is just an awesome hand for my opponent. Really use their mana pretty perfectly. In this game. Worthy Knight was perfect. That was a that was an amazing draw for us. I was, I was probably going to just play the Embercleave on defense, honestly, this this turn if I didn't draw a Claim Contender. I was just going to pass and have the 6-mana Embercleave on defense. And the, the Fervent Champion keeps my Rimrock Knight from attacking. Unfortunately. Yeah, Deckmaster's back up. So what is this thing? This thing's a, a six seven. And just trade with it with all these things. It's probably worth it. Instead of just chump blocking that thing into into oblivion. I'm gonna kill this Oath Sworn Knight the next turn. Sorry about the lag issues there. That's pro that was probably a bad play. I probably need to just activate Castle instead of Ember Cleaving. Now I have to block with everything. Yeah, that was probably a bad play. I mean, it was a bad play.
Oh, come on. Wait, what they target? Oh, they started the Black Lance Paragon? <laughs> See, this thing can't block anyway, so that's why I'm attacking with it. Alright, yep. That play cost me this. Playing the Embercleave there, not not activating castle. What, attacking with everything was lethal? I don't I don't think so. It would have dealt five extra damage, right? They ha they block like if I if I pump the Rimrock Knight twice, um, it does an extra four damage, and then one damage from the Fervent Champion, and they they block one Fervent Champion. Yes, I can equip there for free, but then if I want to re equip the the Rip Rock Knight next turn I have to spend mana. It doesn't really matter because I can't survive this attack. Yes, I know I know Rimrock can't block. They have a Black Lance Paragon that would block one Fervent Champion. So if I just if I attacked with my three creatures and I pumped the Rimrock Knight twice, I would have dealt an extra four damage from the pumps, which would have put them down to two. And I have these two Fervent Champions, and they block one of them with the Black Lance Paragon, and the other one goes through and deals one damage. So I mean, once once I played the Ember Cleave last turn, I I died basically when they I I needed to activate Castle Arden Vale. I could have kept a Worthy Knight alive if I would have, and then with having a Worthy Knight alive, then I would have gotten an extra creature. That was that play. That was where I messed up. But still pretty good for us. Um, yeah, maybe the triple block didn't work either. Maybe I needed to just try to keep on chumping the the chumping the three four. Um, into oblivion. And uh, honestly made that, that plan didn't work. Gave my opponent good attacks with everything. Like looking back at it, I don't think that plan worked. But yeah, so I was, I was one off. Yep, I had thirteen damage versus fourteen life because of the because of them giving the the three power life linker life gain there that last time. I don't know what to think about these God's Willings. I think they're probably good here. But this is this is kind of a lot of spells. I should maybe be cutting Embercleave. I just I don't like the creature that can't block. Oh, I'm at 23 subs, I'm one behind. I, I, basically, I don't really like the, the three creatures for this kind of matchup that I'm taking out here, but I... That's a bad hand. That's that's kind of the problem, is I, I don't want as many Ember Cleaves as I had there either, though. 
All right, well, this is a good hand. Um, I guess I can't cast Response Resurgence yet. We need a land. I just play Arena, Kakuna, because um, yeah, this is this is my day job. This is what I do every day. That was not a good draw. I need another land. Good. That land was a perfect draw. Let's me Ember Cleave next turn also. Yeah, I didn't have the mana to go one drop, double one drop because of the castle coming to play tapped. So basically this three mana card is just going to be trading with one drops, which I don't love. I don't like this thing not blocking, you know, this trading with like gutter bones, I mean, it's not the worst. May need to get this thing back in on the play. Worthy Knight helps out Luxon a whole lot too by making getting free creatures for you. But yeah, I, I do feel like I should cut either a Luxodon or an Ember Cleave and get this red cap back in here. Or one of these spells. I I think I need, you know, take out one of these spells or one of these two. I just don't know which one I want to take out. I'll take out Number Cleave. Uh, yes, Mighty, I did play a... Um... Um... Did play that deck six days ago. Here you go, Mighty.
All right, so we'll go Worthy Knight plus Venerable Knight. Or maybe I go Fervent Champion. All right, yeah, let's go Fervent Champion. The first striker to block the Rimrock Knight. It's either get the the Venerable Knight to, to block the Knight of the Ebon Legion or the first strike to block the Rimrock Knight. Looks like I have 9 damage here if I attack out. And they're at 10. They got 3 blockers. They block Weasel back. You know, like, Worthy Knight, Worthy Knight, like, whatever. Like, you know, basically we can do 3 plus 6. We can do 9. But to draw on anything, basically any spell in our deck. You know, like, all the, those millions of removal spells, anything that could have let us finish this out. So I, I don't think it's worth it just to attack out and do 9 damage, though. Alright, so I'm assuming both cards in hand are Masker Girl. The only reason to discard Masker Girl is you have another one. Alright. Um, uh, this is just getting worse for us. Now they could have the 3-1 the that gives one of their creatures lifelink and everything, too. Yeah. Yeah, now I have the mana to pump red cap um, three times. I didn't last turn. The thing is it, is it dies to... If I just attack with red cap... They just block with Fervent Champion and first strike it. Correct. I was counting three blockers. That's what I said. They had three blockers. Well, that's Masker Girl. GG. Do y'all know... I, I literally said the first time that I was talking about it, they... that Rimrock can't block. I didn't have lethal through Rimrock not blocking. I had nine damage. The whole time I had nine damage. I understand with three blockers. That's what I explained that whenever I talked about it the very first time. I don't know why y'all are thinking that I didn't realize that Rimrock couldn't block. With 
With their blockers, they would have blocked the... They would, have, they would have blocked the Weasel back that I could pump, and they would block whatever creature I gave the plus two with Fervent Champion. Whatever creature I gave the plus two, they were going to block that creature too. That was going to be two of their blocks. So I could not get more than nine points of damage across. Hey, you would have been useful last turn. Plus, after the first turn, um, saying they couldn't kill us on the backswing. I mean, we don't we don't know what they had. Yeah, you know, we don't we don't know if they had you know like Ember Cleave or anything like that. And then and then after the first turn, they had more mana. We don't know if they have Black Lance Paragon. I don't regret not. Just swinging all out. Obviously, for how it worked out, we ended up losing. But I don't really regret my play. I mean, I think, I think, I don't remember exactly how much life I had, but they had a lot of cards that would have killed me on a backswing if they had in hand, you know, like they had cards in hand. Yeah, it was just kind of a, yeah, we just kind of just drew way too many lands, you know? I mean, it's, it's the game two that I should have won, or I could have won at least. It's the game, the game two is the game that I really regret there. Not really how I play the game three. It's the game two with... I needed to make a, a creature with a Castle Arden Veil uh, for defense, and I probably should not have triple blocked the Knight of the Ebon Legion in the game two. I think those two decisions hurt. Um, yeah, we, we talked about that before. Uh, 24 lands does seem like a little bit too much. I think that this is either a 23 or a 24 land deck. I would not want to play 22, and I would not want to play 25. I think it's either 23 or 24. Um, the person that donated for the deck said they liked the 24, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, cutting a, cutting a land and going to 23, I would be very fine with that too. So I th you think you can do either. You can, you can play 23 or 24. We saw, like, you know, obviously that very last game we flood out. But there was other games, like, there was, there was a good amount of games where we only had, like, two lands. Um, and we were just you know, emptying our hand and we only had the two lands. So it's not, it's not just like, because we're playing 24, you're always going to flood out all the time. That was just a game where we did and that happens. Um, yeah, playing a castle Embrith instead of a mountain could definitely be because we can, yeah, we can go wide with the worthy knight and everything. I, I think that's something that I would, would probably change. You don't really need the eighth mountain, just like we don't need that eighth planes for the castle art and veil. So, um, yeah, that we saw how we could go pretty wide there. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely an upgrade, I think. Um, bringing in a Castle Iron Veil instead of the Mountain. Um, as far as the the actual deck, I was really unimpressed with Sky Knight Legionnaire. I I wouldn't I wouldn't really want to play Sky Knight, Sky Knight Legionnaire. I'd want to play something else. Um, just two power for three mana. Yeah, it has haste. Yeah, it has flying. But we're talking about standard here. This isn't this isn't really strong enough, honestly. I wouldn't play this card at all. Um, we have, you know, like we're trying. You know, we can go wide. We have Ember Cleave to go through opponents, things like that. I don't think you need this card. As far as what to play instead, I mean, Tajik's not a knight. I wouldn't mind having Unbreakable Formation. It's a very powerful card. I don't know if... Honestly, I, I would probably play a Circle of Loyalty because I was pretty impressed with how wide we, we were going pretty consistently and Acclaimed Contender can grab Circle of Loyalty. I think what I would want to do is play a Circle of Loyalty 
Um, play one unbreakable formation. And get another Weaselback red cap in here. I think I would, I would rather have those three cards. Um, I don't love the God's Willing either. I, I don't... I don't, I don't know about Icon of Ancestry. I think I'd like just having the Circle of Loyalty there. Don't need to have too much of that kind of stuff. Um, no, I don't like the 2CMC 1-2 Knight that makes a token either. I don't really like that card either. Uh, Sky Knight Vanguard. Yeah, I don't like that card either. Yeah, this gives us a Mana Sink. It gives, it's, it's really about that first thing. It's just being an Anthem for all of our creatures um and then yeah it gives us a mana sink we saw you know we have a good amount of mana i think playing one's fine you know like it's not something that you, you want a lot of that you want to like draw all the time but i think the first one's pretty good especially because you can grab you can grab it sometimes with a claimed contender also um tribunal's not bad could go with tribunal also yeah i like tribunal Uh, no, Venerate Luxodon is free. Icon of Ancestry costs 3 mana. Venerate Luxodon costs 0 mana and also makes a 4-4. Four, four. Venerate Luxodon is definitely better than Icon of Ancestry. I do like Tribunal. Could see playing one tribunal, one God's Willing. I just I just don't love these God's Willings. I wouldn't mind playing a third red cap over one of the God's Willings also. Um, so yeah, basically I would, I would just go with this, but I don't love the God's Willings cards that I would be willing to play instead would be like Weaselback Red Cap and Conclave Tribunal probably, um, maybe, a, especially if you go, could go like third Red Cap and fourth Luxodon also, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that at all. Get the third red cap in here. And then just the fourth Venerate Luxodon. That card's so powerful. So get get in some more one drops. I would like that. Um Yeah, just kind of gives gives you some more power here than like than just the the two power haste creature. But, you know, if you really like God's Will, you can, you can keep those in as well. Um, not not a huge difference there. Um, Deafening Clarion is, is, that is a good sideboard card. Um, Clarion, like this is good against other aggro decks that if you're behind, you know, you get to use it. If you're ahead, you, you can just give your creatures lifelink. So maybe this instead of some of these, but the the reason why we have like the four Justice Strike two response is because the person who's playing this was really struggling with Gruel with Gruel aggro, and you really want your instant speed um, uh, removal there against Gruel decks. <clears throat> but if you want, um, if you're you know playing this later on, and uh, if you want to switch up these eight removal spells, uh, you know just kind of if you want to. To switch them up, playing a couple Deafening Clarion is another good option for those slots. I like the Gideon and the Outlaws Merriment, especially the Outlaws Merriment. Um, I like those in the sideboard. <clears throat> so there we go. So Boros Knights. Um, got to do some cool stuff here.
Um, no, this was yeah we, yeah we still had an hour out. Yeah, we only did play the three matches, but we were still an hour and a half video, so we're good. Um, yeah, there's there's just different options you can play. Um, but now I talked about Sky Knight Vanguard. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at hitting the the microphone there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just think Sky Knight Vanguard's pretty pretty low powered. I wouldn't want to play it, honestly. Um, and integrity, integrity intervention, don't really need it. Like we want to play as many knights as possible in this deck. Like we really want as many knights as we possibly can. Um, and I like these, even though Sky Knight Vanguard is another knight, but I like these and then this top end here. I think that works pretty well. Get that other castle in here. So yeah, give this a try. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, when do we? When will you bring in merriment against um, against decks with like lots of sweep, like against control decks, decks that are playing sweepers, playing a lot of removal. If your opponent's playing a lot of removal, then you play outlaws merriment to try to to try to win a late game. So if your opponent's trying to win a late game, bring in merriments to win the late game. Um. Yeah, Kakuna, I do this for every YouTube video. At the end of every video that I make. I do this at the end of every video. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so that's Boros Knights. Um, okay, uh, yeah, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. And of course, uh, please uh, leave some comments as well. Let me know how Boros Knights is, is treating you. Uh, you know, feel free to talk about the BNR, uh, new BNR announcement, all that kind of stuff. Also, you can check out the Patreon page. There's a link down below, um, just patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG, where I just posted today a long post about uh, what I think will change in standard because of the new BNR announcement. But it's back to best of one Monday for us here. So again, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.